Diablo 4, Season 2. A hope in hell. They say the night is darkest before the dawn, and I'm not certain if that's scientifically accurate, but it sounds suitably enigmatic, so fuck it. Let's roll with it for now, for surely it would seem to be the case with Blizzard's troubled Diablo 4, a game critically well received at launch and a seemingly long-awaited win by the once lauded Blizzard to be fated with an abrupt fall from grace due to poorly thought-out endgame and a slew of poor update decisions by the development team in equal parts. We're talking balance patches which took away the toys people were enjoying and doubling down on the features everyone hated, while a reasonably decent campaign enshrouded an endgame with little substance other than a pointless grind to level 100, thoroughly devoid of the titular series villain, let alone any other demonic entities of note in a final fight at 100 with a certain horned lady everyone had already vanquished 50 levels earlier before rewarding a mount even more underwhelming than the one you were likely already tripping over pebbles with. My personal review was particularly scathing and I awarded the game a quote, brutally honest Diablo 4 out of 10, unquote. People voted with their feet if not their wallets and with looming foes making their presence known for stiff competition in the near future, while Blizzard Entertainment scrambled to correct course with multiple overhauls, patches, and campfire chats. So, have they succeeded in Season 2, and is there hope for the future of the game, if not the franchise? Happy New Year, everyone, and happy hails from the world's arse in 2024. From I, Necropants, and I am absolutely certain this year is going to be one to remember for good or for ill. Because let's be honest with ourselves, which is the most likely. But hey, this is a spoiler free channel. Today I decided to put a capstone on my Diablo 4 content, my thoughts on Season 2, and an updated review of a game I swore was banished from my hard drive for the foreseeable future, but which the team at Blizzard can be congratulated for the very least stoking the fires of my curiosity to give it another chance. Season 2, punctuated by a vampiric menace, is a significant improvement over the abysmal Season 1 state of the game. I have to admit I have been somewhat surprised at how quickly the team has moved to address many of the complaints of the game, even in some cases somewhat admirably. Almost all my original complaints have at least been attempted to be addressed, and the game is in a much better state for it. Is it enough? For me, probably not, but I am certain it will be for those looking for a lighter action RPG experience. It certainly is a big step in the right direction with promises from Blizzard that the remaining concerns for the game are being focused upon going forward, which also in my eyes confirms us so-called haters were right. You can thank us for the better game you are now playing. Many people have echoed the sentiment that the game should have launched as it stands in Season 2 and maybe the player base would not have soured upon it so fast, but I maintain that this was always an impossibility. This was, as admitted by the director himself, many Blizzard developers first ship game ever quickly confirming that the beloved developer from long ago doesn't really exist anymore. The team imagined they had an amazing game and they needed the critical feedback of the player base to realize that they had in fact fucked around and found out. I am very good at complaining, but I don't want this channel to be one of those channels. Yeah, you know the ones I mean. So I like to call out the positive when I think it's deserved. So let's look at the W's first and we will touch on the L's later before I wrap up. End game bosses. As featured a lot in the footage here, five new bosses have been added to the game giving you progression milestones as you head along up to level 100 and give you something else to do other than run the same handful of efficient nightmare dungeons ad nauseum, as well as giving you a way to somewhat deterministically farm some of the more exciting items in the game while also giving you a reason to engage with some of the other content, such as the nerfed hell tides, as you must uh, acquire certain items to access the boss's area. 
Full Renowned now carries over. So now you only ever have to do the Renowned grind once across every season and all characters. As someone who's now done it for two seasons in a row, this one's big. I imagine I would not have played season two if this change had not been made. And your characters now start with a pretty significant power boost once complete. Hello fucking Lulia. Nightmare Dungeon Improvements Now you teleport into the dungeon upon activating the sigil, which automatically highlights its location when you open the map for convenient travel. A very good quality of life change, even though I personally would have rather they found a way to make the journey part of the experience, to more fully engage with the open world nature of the game. Also, I think sigil drops when dungeon is complete are guaranteed. A lot of the annoying objectives were removed and the paths and layouts made more direct, so a lot less backtracking. Bosses were also buffed, so they didn't die in one rotation, well, as often. A lot of the more annoying dungeon modifiers were removed like resource leech, but maddingly left some of the more problematic ones like the lightning dome, although it's somewhat mitigated by a speed buff you receive now when the lightning hits. Glyphs XP got increased, which means by level 100 I had at least all my glyphs leveled to 15, probably the base minimum you'd want, and the mob density has also been improved. The dungeon experience is a little bit more enjoyable. Mounts are 100% better. They don't get as stuck as much, although it is a thing to a degree still. They are faster and their abilities can be triggered more often. You can jump gaps more reliably and you can charge to bust through stockades. Although the dismount abilities are still underwhelming and don't scale very well, at least they are off cooldown usually when you would want to use them. I guess someone finally played the game at Blizzard. Less trash item drops. Basically, you tend to get crafting materials instead of useless trash and common items as well as gems no longer being a droppable um, item and that fills up your inventory and now just immediately goes to your material storage for crafting. This is a good change, but I still really wish there were more viable item classes than rare and unique, because legendaries are really just an aspect after all. 40% faster leveling experience. Now, I'm not sure if Blizzard's numbers are real. I mean, we've been burnt <laughs> in this area before, right? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. But I definitely felt a massive difference and improvement in the leveling process, so it's not such a mind-numbing grind. Uh, the Tree of Whispers uh, content is now worth more worthwhile. Although I didn't go out of my way to farm this mechanic and just let it happen naturally through playing, a much better experience here and actually useful as it is a source for items to open the new boss zones and I think there's some guaranteed drops in the chests as well like nightmare dungeon drops, I might be wrong there but it kind of felt like it. Item power increased to 920. After the drastic nerf to player power in season 1 this was clawed back a little through class buffs and a resistance overhaul and better loot. The cringingly named uber uniques are finally somewhat attainable uh, and can be farmed to a degree with durial runs. All other major bosses tend to drop a unique on death and although an improvement I will have more to say on this shortly. Dum dum dum. We got some city improvements. Basically this amounts to stashes being placed near most vendors meaning you aren't running constantly around town, as well as more critical vendors by the Tree of Whispers. Now all they need to do is put a Tree of Whispers waypoint hotkey. Get it done, Blizzard. Enchanting changes. Costs were basically retooled here, making it a, a little bit more reasonable, so you can re-roll a lot more often, but with the downside, where it seems that the re-rolled stats were no longer easily determined. Unsure if this has been changed with the recent patch, as I simply haven't found any gear worth re-rolling for a while. Resistance stats actually work now. The infamously useless system in the game until this point, resistances just did not work at all. And now it works like basically every other action RPG in existence. Don't fix what isn't broken, right? Now, there's a 70% soft cap you basically build towards that can be done in various places on equipment um, and the Paragon tree. 
and then you'd be done with it. With a powerful in-game option of uplifting the max stats to I believe it was around 85% from memory. Monster crowd control severely reduced. Now, I do not know if this is related to the resistance changes, but massive improvement here um, to the point I can't even recall being crowd controlled at all, maybe. Maybe a little bit too improved, but actually, but hell, no one likes being not able to play the game and the chain stuns are completely gone. Maybe a little bit too easy. World bosses happen more often, although still pretty much a joke. Uh, drops and legion events are now worth doing for the boss items and better feedback when they're about to spawn. Helltides. After the disastrous nerfs to the system, which was probably the best thing they had going in the original game, this is now being clawed back a bit more and is worth doing again if only for the required items to target farm the new bosses. Mod density also seems to have been improved across the game really. Combat text. You can now hide all the annoying texts, vulnerability, etc. on the screen adding to game visibility. This was a huge one for me and now I can actually see what the fuck is going on in the game. 100% better. I know some people would like damage numbers. For me, I don't really care. If anything, I like to see crits and that's it. If I want to see them at all. Minimap zoom. An improvement here and a little bit more useful, but it's still not enough to justify removing the overlay map for most players. I still can't fathom why Blizzard are so terrified of giving players control over things like this. At least let us adjust the minimap zoom for fuck's sakes. Stash filtering, which was another massive problem, has been alleviated by uh, filtering um, options and stash and things are much easier to find in your vault which is vital due to just the blatant nerfing that's been done to the franchise's item and icon graphics, another feature that should have been in at release. AI and minion improvements. I haven't been playing a minion necromancer, so I'm unsure on this one if the situation is better now, so sound off in the comments below if you are. Is it more fun and viable to play a minion-based necromancer? And finally, a note on the seasonal mechanics. Overall, a much better seasonal mechanic this time around, basically amounting to a mini helltide which are constantly up in the game and a resource farm for vampiric powers and a progression board with rewards. I ended up engaging with the system a fair bit, also a good power increase with the slottable vampiric power abilities, some of which, um, which led me to rolling another necro this season to be honest. I had designs playing a sorcerer this season after not really liking the rogue at all in the last one. Because of the theme, I went back to see how my melee necro build was stacking up, and I definitely had a much more enjoyable time this time around. And that really sums up the W's, time for the L's. And as this video is starting to drag on longer than I originally intended, you will be happy to note that L's are a bit of a shorter list this time around. This is what Blizzard basically needs to improve the game in my eyes as it matures leading into its first major expansion pack at the end of the year. The elephant in the room I alluded to before is the item system. Although significant improvements have been made this season, this is one of the most vital systems to get right in an action RPG and they just haven't got it right. I will reiterate that I find it mind boggling. This is the company that owns the source code to Diablo 2 and they still insist on reinventing the wheel every new game in the franchise despite failing multiple times. Diablo 2's loot system is not perfect, don't get me wrong, but it's a base to work with and refine. As it stands, the Diablo 4 loot system is, well, it's just boring. Just not enjoyable to deal with and still involves you accumulating an overflow of yellow and orange items and meticulously comparing them one by one and breaking down 99% of them. The affixes are generic and there's just far too many of them. They even backpedaled and changed the resistance system to how it worked in the previous titles and I say it's time to follow suit with the rest of it. I do not want a game based on rune words like Diablo 2 eventually became but there has to be somewhat of a workable middle ground. Because as it stands, the loot system is just not fun and the system that generally keeps you engaged in these types of games. Meanwhile, the pool of unique items is still very small to the point you 
know what has dropped by the item type almost every single time before actually picking it up and checking. Also, they fail to understand the importance of being able to find loot for another class, as this is often what will make me roll another character. And of course, trading is virtually not even a thing, which is one of the primary reasons its main competitor is so successful, not naming any names. Yes, this game needs a loot 2.0 TM. And no, not a Diablo 3 loot 2.0, as my controversial opinion of Diablo 3 is that I think it actually got worse than Reaper of Souls. Diablo needs a Diablo 2 2.0. Blizzard have indicated the loot system is the primary concern going forward, so at least they are trying and acknowledge that this is actually a major problem of the game. And this should hopefully put the final steps in place to putting the game where it needs to be. Uh, once I leveled to level 85 plus, I still found myself in a difficult position of finding decent item upgrades other than constantly farming boss items for the fabled uber uniques and higher tier loot, which really just means the numbers on the affixes got bigger. To the point I eventually just got lazy and I started not even looking at a lot of the items other than the raw item power because they were always trash and I know because of this I missed out on some of the upgrades because of the mind numbing nature of the process and although they fixed enchanting costs they actually made it di more difficult to get the sort of stats you wanted which made me less likely to engage in the process as well. Later in the season they reintroduced new rewards on the bosses and a new tiered dungeon called the Abattoir of Zur, which I unfortunately can't really comment on because I'd already grown too bored to farm the remaining seasonal tier to access it. From what I can gather, it's just Diablo 3 rifts all over again with a glyph reward, and the first area is equivalent to about a level 100 nightmare dungeon, so near perfect gear is required going forward. This week, I thought I would round out this video and I would grind out the remaining tier of seasonal achievements to try out. Um, try this thing out but I simply found myself too bored with the gameplay at 100 primarily due, due to the difficulty of finding upgrades and the unwillingness to push myself through those last tier of achievements. From what I can gather from the mainly Diablo 4 creators this system leaves a lot to be desired and I have PTSD of the Diablo 3 rift grind so I decided to skip it for now. I will be checking this out at some point later but when that is I'm not sure. Character diversity this has not changed and my previous sentiments about the system remain. No, I'm not talking about the vacuous diversity of inclusion or how many nose rings my character can equip, but the diversity of character builds. Blizzard claims that this is the Diablo game where you have the most choice. It's simply not true. Stop class locking items. If I want to fail and make a neat melee necromancer or sorceress, let me. There's also only really a handful of viable builds, so no, you had way more choice in your previous games, Blizzard. The game perspective. Multiple times, I've actually found myself falling asleep at the keyboard while playing this season, and before, and I realized it's not because that the game was boring. I don't do this when I play video games typically, even when I'm not enjoying myself. This season is vastly improved and a much better experience overall. And I finally realized it's the camera perspective. It's simply tiring to look at. It's too close to the action for the most part, and in some cases, a direct bird's eye view. When I realized the nature of the game's presentation was why I was literally falling asleep at the keyboard. For a look see around the internet and to see if anyone else shared the sentiment and quickly found that I was not alone. Blizzard. For the love of Sanctuary, give us some control of the camera. A static world. Finally, a hallmark of the genre has always been procedural generation, but not in the lazy way, but rather the dynamic and clever reuse of assets in a gameplay loop where you are constantly delving dungeons, fighting monsters, and picking up equipment. Blizzard has thrown this completely out the window, and it may not seem like such a big deal, but familiarity breeds contempt, and it really adds to the growing boredom as you play. This may make a little more sense for the open world, but when you have to run the same handful of nightmare dungeons over and over again from levels 50 to 100, it starts to get very tedious. But I think that's enough negatives for now, so let's wrap up, shall we? With all the changes they've made, I think it's fair to raise my score a couple of points. 
I would say the game's a decent 7 out of 10 at this juncture. What they have done is truly significant and I applaud them for their work. They have tried to turn this ship around. So we have an expansion looming later in the year and the game does have potential if they can pull it off. As it stands, I actually am done with Diablo for now. <laughs> Going forward on this channel, I'll be pivoting to some other games as there's a couple of big releases on my horizon which I would like to make content for. I hope this whole video is not as repetitive as I realize I was a reiterative um, with some of my points in my previous one, but I thought it was important that I would give my final perspective from actually playing through the season that I intended to not touch in the first place. Thanks to anyone listening, if indeed you still are. Like, dislike, comment, subscribe and all that YouTube garbage. Haters are always most welcome. Stay tuned for more content. Welcome to 2024. The flying spaghetti monster take pity on all our souls. Necropants out and returning to the void.